Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here with Kyle Weens again from iFixit. Uh, Kyle, uh, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Uh, what what are we taking apart today, or what do we have taken apart today already? I we guess. took apart the Xbox One. So this is it right here. Contrary to popular belief, this is not the first Xbox. No, this is not. It's this the is third. The third Xbox. And if you count all the revisions, it's probably what like the fifth or sixth yeah, at this point. It's slim and, um, I yeah. snapped this back together by accident, but this is an empty <laughs> shell. Yes, there is no, nothing. We nothing. took we took the Xbox out of the box. Like I wanted to play Peggle. <laughs> um, so so tell me a little bit. This is. This is the third time they've done this. They obviously had some problems last go around. They did. You guys, I mean, maybe worked out pretty well for you guys. We used one of your tools to pop open the, mm -hmm. the 360s many yes. times. Um, but the, what what do you guys think about the the one so far? Uh, yeah, we're excited about this. So Microsoft's first imperative going into this is we have to fix the cooling system, uh, mm -hmm. and we have to. I mean, the, the issue with the that caused the red ring of death was separation of the uh, the processing unit and the the main board. So the material in between got hot, it cracked, and okay. so you could fix it by clamping it back down or by heating it and reflowing the solder. This was caused by insufficient cooling through the whole system. So. Uh, in the course of the Red Ring of Death, Microsoft actually had a billion dollar write down. Yeah, that's a, a huge mistake. Billion dollar engineering mistake. Yeah. So let's, I don't think they made that mistake on this one. Okay, Time will tell, but I don't think they did. Oh yeah, and just looking at the cooler, like this is an enormous fan. Massive fan. Massive fan, a lot of airflow. How fast, did you guys actually open it when it was on? Can you tell uh, how fast it was spinning? We didn't measure it. Um, but then look at all the copper on the back and the, are these yes. heat, heat pipes or are these just heat, chunks yeah, of copper? I mean, they're just chunks of copper, but. Yeah, that's bananas. Um, that's a lot of cooling for a game console. It's a lot of cooling. Any of these cool green posts uh, <laughs> right to the board. So where do they go? And they then, go through the board and into the into the shell. Uh, yeah. So this, I mean, this guy just uh, you can see on the board here. Okay. We've got four points where, so the cooler just fits Smacks right on. Smacks down, there. and it, it looks like like there's no way it can get separated from the from the CPU. No, and I mean this is a pretty darn rigid attachment mechanism. So it's interesting. This this feels more like a commodity PC to me okay. than the the Xbox 360 felt a bit more like a custom design. Kind of makes sense. I mean, it was a it was a risk based IBM Power PC processor, right? This is an x86, essentially an APU that's been right. souped up, right? Yeah. So um, and I think I think both Microsoft and Sony said, "Whoa, we went a little too custom last time. We're going to go back and be a bit more plain vanilla and add the, the special sauce more on the software side and make something that's a little." I mean, but there's still room for them to scale this down and, and shrink shrink the costs. Absolutely, cost over I mean, time. this is this is a massive board. This is the biggest board that we have taken out of any product in a long time. Did you see it? Can you tell how many layers are in the board? Is like because I know the more layers you get, typically the more expensive the it more, is to produce. Yeah, we did, you kind of got to cut it open to see. But honestly, if you look at this, you can see. I mean, it's at least two, but it's not it's not that many. It's more. not like a crazy nine layer server board no. or anything like that. But it, so we have RAM arrayed around the around the yes. the CPU. I assume this is a CPU, obviously. Yes. It has Xbox One written on it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's it's a kind of nice etch job. They have a little logo and everything. It's all shiny. Um, so and something kind of fun. All right, yeah. so check out. You see the traces going to the RAM. Uh huh. So you see traces going out to the edge are, are relatively straight, but the ones going to the center are squiggly back and forth. Uh huh. Why do you think they did that? Because they all have to be exactly the same length. Yes. Because of the speed of because light. Of yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Yeah. It's so they're it's... slowing light down. Hey guys, we have to have this exact. And, and somewhere, somewhere, there's a guy whose job it was to figure out how to get the ones off to the side here the same length as the ones that are further away at the yeah. edges. So CPU memory. There's a bunch of lanes coming from the CPU over to this guy right here. It's another big chip labeled Xbox One. Any ideas what that is, Kyle? I mean, it could be the North Bridge. Uh, I mean, you know, interconnect, because you see all the I.O. is going into that mm -hmm. and then over to the CPU. Yeah, there's another bunch of lanes going over. This is an HDMI port. These are, I guess, USB ports. I can't tell from here. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got two. Uh, it, it's interesting. They say, they say SS on them, mm -hmm. on, the, on the USB port. Well, on, on the cases. Oh, okay. So. And I, I guess that's super speed. Oh, so they're USB Super, 3. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, and then, so the other ports on this guy, uh, normal Ethernet. This is an IR blaster, I think is what yes, it's labeled it on the back. Did they sell an IR blaster? Was that uh, in the box? That I I no, no. I, the, the, it's like for an external third-party IR port. Yeah, so so, so like the, the Kinect sensor has an IR blaster on it that can control your TV right. 
and your receiver or whatever right. else. But I assume you would use this if you had it in a cabinet in another or something. Room or in the yeah. cabinet, yeah. Um, then there's but it, it does seem, I mean, that seems like a very PC-like thing to do, to have an extra port that only a very small portion of people are going to do. If Apple were making the Xbox, they would have never done that. Absolutely not. you have to buy a whole other accessory. You'd plug into your Thunderbolt port, yes. and yeah, you'd be real bummed about it. And it'd um, be $59. Almost certainly, yeah. And have some logic in there for no apparent reason. <laughs> um, this guy is a Kinect port. So this is presumably like USB 3 in power, maybe USB yeah. 2 in power even. Um, just piped out it's proprietary right. so we can't use extension cables with our connects no I mean they, they've got to sell an extension cable but uh, yeah I remember with the original connect that was a big deal being able to put your connect somewhere else so they, this has got to be something that to, that they're gonna have to provide people with a way it, that, it makes sense because you're gonna need an adapter everybody's gonna be wanting to take their connect and do it you know, well if you have a projector or something like that then your Xbox may be in the back of the room right. and the connect and yes. it's just not gonna work yes. Um, the, for what it's worth, the PlayStation 4 has the same problem. It's a different proprietary cable, but it's still a proprietary <laughs> cable. A um, couple USB ports, uh, optical out, HDMI out, HDMI in, HDMI out. Right. It's weird. Well, no, I, I really appreciate the uh, focus on saying this is going to be the hub. And I think, I mean, they're, they're future-proofing themselves a bit. I mean, they've got some cable box integration now, but they have the ability three years from now to totally kill it. Well, and if they can get the cable boxes to actually talk to them, which I think they're the first ones that have a chance to do that, right. maybe it'll work out. Well, and the IR blaster is a nice way that, okay, well, if you don't want to talk to us, then yeah. we're going to speak your remote protocol and talk to you whether you... It's a gun to hold to their yes. head. If you don't do this the right way, we're we'll gonna, do it the wrong way. Yes. Yeah. Um, what else we got on the board? I mean, it's a pretty straightforward board, like you said. It really is. You've got... Um, oh, there's a couple of weird connectors, though. There's this guy here, which, which I guess... I will show you. That's okay. for this. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. And then they have a USB port on the side. Oh, this is the one that shows up on the top of the case, right? Yeah, so it's got three USB ports. That's on, on the side oh, of the case. The, it's, oh, oh, and oh, I don't oh, fully right understand... There. I mean, because you get three USB ports. I don't even know if that there are three different accessories that work with the Xbox One yet. Well, I mean, you can have a, a, a steering wheel for cars yep. and what? Controllers. You can plug them in. They have. So they sell a charge uh, system. For play and for, charge. For, yeah. Um, theoretically, you'll be able to plug USB storage in. Because right. they've said you'll, you know, you can't upgrade the hard drive internally, which I guess we'll talk to, talk about in a minute. Yes. Um, but for the most part, that's it. So, so yeah. maybe maybe next year there will be four things you can plug into your Xbox, and but right now there's only three. There aren't any USB ports on the front right now either, are there? Correct. It's okay. just on the side and in the back, which I don't really understand. Like, how much? How is the side that much more convenient than the port in the back? Well, it's because you're supposed to put it vertically, right? Oh, wait. I don't think that's true. I don't think so. I think I think they want you specifically to lay it flat, very specifically. And you've got the fan. Heat yeah. goes up. So the fan rests underneath this, yes. this panel here. Um, so we're looking at the board. The board goes in right on top like this, right? Right. Um, you said, well, do you want to talk about the front panel thing? Because I thought that was kind of sure. cool. Sure. Yeah, this is kind of neat. So this is, uh, this plugs on to the board here. Okay. So that's just a big custom header. What are all, yeah. there's, um, so there's stuff on the back and stuff on the front. And uh, there's the connector for. Um, oh, it's inside. Yeah. The front panel. So the front panel. There's a there's a capacitive switch on the front. Right. As well as a this physical. Is, I guess that's a capacitive ejection. There's button, a physical so. switch over here. Oh, what's that for? I'm not sure. I've never even seen that. Yeah, there's a, there's a physical switch there, and then uh, on the front there's the. Uh, Maybe that's the capacitive sensors for both the uh, the power and the uh, CD drive. Hmm. Blu-ray Blu drive. Blu-ray drive. Yeah, there's no CD drives yeah. anymore. Um, okay, so that's the that's for the front connector. This um, is your IR transmitter here. Oh, okay. Or a receiver too, right? And yeah. I assume. Does it say? It says U1. Hmm. Perfectly. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and then let's see what else do we have in the box. We have a slot-fed Blu-ray drive. Yes, which is massive. It's huge. It's not even a laptop drive. It's a, it looks it's like a... halfway in between a desktop drive and a laptop drive. But it, it's pretty heavy. I mean... This thing's got some heft to it. Do we know? Are, are, do we know who's making the drives? Is this all one company, yes. or are there a bunch of different yes, ones? Yes, it's conveniently labeled. Oh. Um, BD ROM drive. Uh, Philips. Oh, Philips. Okay. And then this You've has. Heard of them. Yeah, we, we, they make drives. It's a thing that they do. Um, and then this just clamps on. How did it go? It went like this, I think, right? Or no, like this. Here uh, we go. Yeah, that's actually yes. To to hold it up off the. Yeah. To 
so it all kind of snaps into place. There's not a whole lot of screws inside this. It yeah, like. and it, it, pretty modular, easy to get at. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of space inside this thing, so mm -hmm. completely the opposite of a cell phone design. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, and the, the transparency, you look at this board, and it's pretty clear what everything is. So uh, I think refreshing, fun to look at, very similar to a PC design. It's a serviceable design. Serviceable design. Um, uh, the There's this adorable piece. Okay. That looks like something out of an Erector set. So it's a sled, right? It's a sled for the hard drive to sit on. Why wouldn't you have a sled for your hard drive? What's fascinating is there's plenty of room for a desktop grade hard drive, but I think pricing on the laptop drives and power consumption. I don't know where you get 500 gig drives that are in a three and a half inch, you know, this is probably the small, the physically largest three and a half inch drive, you, uh, 500 gig drive you get. And they're using standard connectors for everything too. Yes. I mean, this has a docking port, but it's just a SATA connector. Yes. And a um, like a weird four pin header that plugs directly into the yes. motherboard. So everybody's getting everything's getting power off the motherboard. Uh, we didn't talk about the external power brick, but it uses an external power brick just mm -hmm. like the 360. But unlike the PlayStation, right? The PlayStation has theirs inside. We're going to yes. take that apart uh, in a little while today, I think. Um, okay, so hard drives. What else are we forgetting? There's this weird guy in the front, and I don't know what. So on top of all of this, this everything. Is the right way? Yeah, on top yeah. of all this, this, this guy sits. This is your wireless. Uh, all, so all, this is basically a daughter card for all the wireless connectivity. So Bluetooth. So you've got, you've got three antennas that connect onto this. Okay. And uh, Marvell. So I mean, this you've got Marvell on the PCB and two Marvell chips. So they might have just subcontracted this whole thing out to Marvell. And it lives on. It lives outside the box. So it does. Inside it sits. The Faraday it cage. sits outside the Faraday cage and it connects in. This is the antenna wires to the an antennas on the front. This is just a long. Antenna connector. So why would you take apart your Xbox One, Kyle? Well, uh, perhaps you want to upgrade the hard drive. Okay. That's a reason. Uh, perhaps you need to fix a red ring failure, <laughs> except it's probably a different color if it okay. happens. Mm. Like what's the on, the, on the PS4, it's the blue it's light of blue, death? There's a blue light of death, the top bar flashes yes. yeah, if, if it all goes haywire. Of, yeah. Are um, we seeing failures on the ones? I haven't seen a lot. Of, I, I've definitely seen some people that have had like upgrades go bad where the power went out during the, the firmware, but it seems like a very, very small number yeah. of people. I think by this point with the Xbox 360, we were probably already starting to hear about sure. Red Rings of Death. Okay. So maybe, you know, fingers crossed, right. maybe it's all worked out this time. Okay, so two or three years from now, what are you going to be fixing inside this? The fan uh, will get dusty and you're going to need mm -hmm. to clean the fan out. So, I mean, every couple of years you've got something in your dust filled environment, you got a fan that yeah. big, you got to open it up. Uh, it, uh, you know, clean out the dust. Hard drives fail more often than solid state components, so the hard drive will fail at some point. You mm -hmm. need to replace that. And then, of course, uh, you've got a slot feed uh, Blu-ray drive, and so your kid is going to stick the small CDs in it, and then you're going to have to take jam a apart. peanut butter sandwich in there. Right. Yeah, so so there, there's plenty of stuff to fix. Um, one of the things that was tricky, especially on the Xbox 360 Slims, was actually getting the first part of the case open. So we're doing this in completely completely out of order here. But this guy is the bottom cover, um, and you guys said it was easier to open. It's relatively straightforward to open. The tabs take a little bit of finessing. You gotta kind of open them in the right order. And there's a uh, warranty void sticker to get inside. Not always. Uh, some other products don't, but this one does. Okay. So that's really, I mean, the, the only uh, negative is just, I mean, you know, getting all that out uh, to get to the hard drive. So we docked to the point for the hard drive not being user accessible okay. the, way, the way it is on the PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, it's, with the PS4, you just slide open the top, yeah. unscrew a couple screws, and you can yeah. swap it out. Right. So overall, we rated the Xbox One an 8 out of 10. Okay. Uh, so very highly repairable, better than the Xbox 360. One reason that the Xbox 360 cost Microsoft a billion dollars, they weren't uh, replacing the units. They were actually getting the units back, fixing them, and then sending them back out to people. And they were wishing that they had made the product easier to take apart. Because it was taking them too long. It was taking the, them oh. too long. They had they had legions of employees in Mexico repairing these things. And if wow. it was easier to get in to, to repair the thing, it might have only cost them $600 million instead of a billion. Well, say $400 million makes a good day for you, <laughs> right. right? So people say repairability doesn't have any be benefit for the manufacturers. Well, actually, it really can and have serious bottom line implications. Well, fantastic, Kyle. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll have more tested soon. Uh, thanks for coming by, Kyle. And Absolutely, and you can check out our Teardown and the iFixit app. It's free in all app stores. All app stores. All app stores, free, low, low price of zero. Excellent. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Cheers.